Now, Tim Ord joins the Tom O'Brien Show every Tuesday and Thursday. Talk about the markets and particularly gold uh, at the end there. And uh, of course, we've had you know quite a volatile market since Thursday. Uh, so, Tim, how are you doing? Good, good. Thanks for having me on again. Absolutely. So, I'm curious uh, to hear what we have to look at today, especially with this small little bounce we're getting here. Yeah, let's, let's look at the uh, S&Ps. Uh, the first chart, I might have got these out of order, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, the first chart's SPX tilt ratio. <laughs> Do you have that one? Yep, uh, that's up right now. All right, so anyhow, uh, I use this ratio, and I use the RSI off this ratio, and it, it identifies... Uh, you know, I use the trend as a panic and think above 1.2 on a daily close. I get a 10 day average up around 1.2. So I got different indicators to measure different type panics because you, you want to find panic in the market because only panic only forms at bottoms. So I have, a, you know, different indicators that look different types of panic, I guess. But anyhow, the, the SPX tilt ratio, so that's the, the equity market and the bond market. So it's the relationship those two markets, and so I watched the RSI on this, and it picks it does pretty well. Uh, on Monday, we got a reading of uh, uh, fourteen RSI, which is really really low. A lot of times it gets right below thirty, and usually gets up low. But when you really get below uh, thirty, uh, a lot of times. Uh, you have a spike bottom or a V bottom. You go straight down, turns around, goes straight back up. And I think that's maybe what's happening here. Uh, I circled in um, on the SP charts, which is the second window up from the bottom, the previous times RSI of this ratio. You can see it picked out pretty much um, all the lows. Matter of fact, back in the December of, of uh, 2023, the market was just going sideways, but that ratio got down to, to below 30. So that side, uh, sideways pattern uh, was actually a basing pattern before it rallied up. So it doesn't have to come at bottoms. It actually can, it can come at consolidation phases. But every time it gets below 30, it's, it's a bullish sign. But I wanted to point out, uh, it's in chart two here. Go ahead. Yeah, so this is the SPX tilt ratio. This is back in 2019. And what I want to point out, previous times in 2019, this ratio got down around 14 again. And in all cases, it pretty much was a spike bottom, at least two of them were. There was actually probably about 80% of the time when the RSI hits around, you know, 15 range, uh, it's, it's, it's a spike bottom. And, uh, I could show you more examples, but there's two there, uh, even though August of 2019 wasn't really a spike bottom. It did nail the bottom, and it kind of flipped sideways for a while. But the other two went straight down, straight back up. And I'm thinking because of the RSI hitting below 14, this market in general is is, is just going to work higher here. Sure, It's not going to base bill. I think it's just going to kind of really uh, dramatically go higher, I guess you might say. And we'll look at where my, my target is for the next high. And chart three, uh, this is one of, uh, uh, on Tuesday, uh, a caller called in and asked about the uh, TLT VVIX ratio and the VIX to VVIX ratio. And uh, so they were saying, since the ratio, let's start, let's start with TLT to uh, VVIX ratio, which is on the bottom window. And since it broke below the previous lows of the previous two times, the one back in, looks like about October of, of last year, and the other time was April of this year, and we broke below those lows, that's not how do you use these ratios. You, you, you measure, um, the ratios are basically acceleration. You want to measure the degree of the acceleration, not where it broke below a previous low or a previous high. You can't have some divergence that way, but what you do is you're trying to measure uh, the velocity of the move. Quick moves in quickly, slow moves in slowly. So if you get a real acceleration to the downside, 
on the TLT ratio, it, it means the exhaustion to the downside. Yeah, I hear the music. Absolutely, yeah, Tim, stay right there, folks. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We are joined by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Tim, before we went to the break, we were talking about the VIX. VIX, uh, sadly, we had the wrong chart up. If you could do a kind of a quick recap, what was uh, the point with chart three? Chart three, well, uh, the top window, well, actually, the top window is the RSI for the next window down, which is a VIX to VVX ratio. And a subscriber or one of your listeners did call in and say since that ratio broke above some previous highs, then uh, the market should break some bro below some previous lows. That's not how it works. What that RSI does is measure the acceleration, and the acceleration is, is an important part of defining market uh, tops or, or actually it works better at market bottoms because you usually accelerate down into a market bottom. So you want to find indicators that accelerate, uh, and VIX is a perfect one. So everybody, the more fear in the market, the more bullish the outcome will be. So an RSI uh, of the uh, VIX to VIX ratio, which are basically kind of a, a VIX on steroids, I guess you might say. And uh, so an RSI, it looks like, to me, it look, got up around 80. That's really an exhaustion move to the downside as the RSI, or the VIX, rather, uh, really accelerate to the upside where the RSI got to 80. That's a lot of fear in the market. In other words, everybody exit to the uh, to, to the exit door, and that's where you get bottom. So you want to have fear where the VIX really screams up, and uh, so that that's that's how you use it. You don't use it compared to previous highs, previous lows. You measure it to the degree of, of panic and acceleration of the VIX. Hope that makes sense. No, it hurt. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, so we, we can move on, or, or is there yeah. any questions about that? I, let me see. I don't think there's any more questions. I think that kind of nailed it on chart three. I do have chart four up, and this is definitely chart four. Talk about spy. All right. So we got chart four up? Yep. All right, so this is kind of a, you know, we measured, you know, you can measure fear uh, fear by the acceleration of the VIX. Another way to measure fear is, is the trend closes. This is uh, yesterday's close. We got a five-day trend of 1.33, and you got a 10-day trend, 1.24. That adds to the support of the idea that we made a bottom on Monday. Uh, we got long Monday. Um, and we're staying along. We think this this current rally has uh, some staying power. So we got quite a bit of fear on Monday with the acceleration of the VIX and also with the the trend closes, especially the five day, three day, ten day. So we got quite a bit of uh, fear in the market. Uh, so we need to work that fear off before the next high goes. So where can we go? So let's go to chart five. Perfect. Uh, Okay, chart five. Uh, this is kind of a this is a longer term chart. The chart goes back to mid two thousand sixteen. The top window is the RSI for the daily SPYs. I showed this chart in the past, and it works really well. But when the RSI gets up above eighty, and on July tenth we had eighty one point nine eight, that's never the final high. A lot of times you get uh, short term consolidations, uh, but ultimately. You, you make higher highs, so it keeps a bigger trend up. So you get that much momentum in the market, it just doesn't die. It, it consolidates and it builds some cause, I guess you might say, a wife cop term, and then start making higher highs. So I'm thinking, uh, we back in, uh, you're looking two, I got two square boxes there. What's, what I think is, is probably going to mirror what's going to go on in the current market. And I kind of narrowed it down to the one in the middle of the chart is uh, mm -hmm. right after the COVID crash. It looks like about October of 2020. I got a possible scenario. I think when we're all said and done, the current market is going to look like that. We're going to go up, we're going to go back down, and finally we're going to break out to the upside. I see. So... That's what I'm thinking was going to happen. So we just started the rally uh, here, and I think we're going to 
pretty much go straight up in general, probably to some sort of a high in September. But uh, uh, in the bottom one, there's a 10-day RSI, 1.24, which is bullish. But so this current rally, I think it's just going to be a short-term rally. It may last a month, you know, maybe a month and a half at most. Then we're probably going to go back down again and look similar to that one in the middle of the chart where I have possible scenario. So because of the RSI did hit above 80, ultimately we're going to break our new highs before the year's out. But between now and then, it could be kind of a rough road. So go to chart six. Perfect. Okay, we have it up. Here's, yeah, here's where I think we're going to go. <laughs> I have a... a uh, anyhow, the blue part in the middle is basically where all the trend readings are, around 1.2 1. Uh, or higher. So, yeah, a slew of them. We blew through it kind of hard on Monday. We blew down a little bit through it. And sometimes the market overshoots to the upside. Sometimes it overshoots to the downside. But it has a support rate area right around that 520 to 540, 45, depends how you, you do it. But I think we're going to go back up and test that gap that we left open coming off the top back in uh, mid-July, up around that 560. I bet we hit that uh, area. There's a small gap uh, what, last week uh, around that 540 area. I don't think I don't think that's, it may hesitate the market there a little bit. But I think we're going to go back up where the bigger gap is, up around 560. And I think that's probably going to be resistance up there. But I think we'll get there fairly fairly soon, probably in the next three, four weeks. So a little bit of patience. Not every day is going to be an update. But I do think we made a bottom or a V bottom. And in general, this market's kind of going to work higher uh, fairly fast. It's going to be a worthwhile percentage to the upside. Uh, I haven't done the calculations, but we're, we got at least another 5 6 7% to go here, or 5 and seven percent to go probably before we reach that target, but I do think uh, the market is probably going to hesitate that five sixty area. Then, and then from there, uh, I think we go back down. Well, and I think we go back down, possibly even test uh, the May, the August fifth low again. We'll have to wait and see. So, uh, we got time to get to chart seven. Yeah. So time we have about ten here. seconds left. Um, if you want to stay for the next segment. Um, I don't know if you have anything on gold. It doesn't look like we have any charts on that. Um, but, you know, we've no, had a pretty sustained, I mean, a nice pop-up today as well, and gold has held pretty strong. I, I don't know if what you've... Uh, well, actually, I think that both markets are going to trade together in a nutshell. I think gold is going to go up along with uh, the equity market. Fantastic. Well, Tim, stay right there. Folks, we'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We are joined uh, by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Tim, uh, before we went to the break, we were just getting a chart seven, which is the SPX, the Zwag uh, breath indicators, or the thrust, excuse right. me. Right. Okay. Yeah, this is this is something to watch for. So, we, you know, we got a panic. Uh, we got panic on Monday. We got some sort of a bottom forming here. Uh, the bottom window is... Uh, New York advancing issues over New York total issues, and you take a 10-day average, and the Zwag breath thrust indicator uh, kicks in when this indicator hits below 0.4, which it did on Monday. It actually closed at 0.4 and needs to rally to 0.6 or higher in 10 days. If it does that, that's a brag thrust indicator, and I got those uh, red lines and blue lines or times when this indicator kicked in in the past. The last one we had was uh, coming off the April bottom. Uh, the one before that was the October of last year. And then we had uh, three of them in that bottom formation of uh, 2023. So right now, uh, so as of uh, yesterday's close, uh, we're at uh, 0.52. So we need to get you know 0.6, which is doable, uh, uh, 10 days from August 5th. So August 5th, uh, actually, let me get my calendar here. August 5th, uh, let's see, August 5th, this be the 19th. No, yeah, be the 19th. 
So by the 19th, this indicator is at 0.6. So what's that mean by the for the market? Well, chances are that reconfirms the RSI we had on uh, RSI hitting 80 on the market back in July 10th. That these when these get triggered, they only happen in bull markets. So this would reinforce the idea that probably new highs in the market are coming for the years out. So we'll have to wait and see. You can get short-term pullbacks once this indicator kicks in from 0.4 to 0.6, but ultimately you're going to hit newer high or higher highs. So that's something I'm kind of watching here. So on April 19th, if we hit 0.6, it doesn't have to be. It has to be with 10 days or less. In, you know, the last time we got one hit was actually took us 12 days, but one back in October of 2023 only took five days. But if it can happen in by the 19th of August, then uh, you got to remain bullish at least till year end, uh, you know, pullback or no pullback. So that's something I'll be watching for, see if it happens by the 19th of, of, of uh, August. So If it doesn't happen so within that time, you, you I mean, does that it. indicate that we're in a, a bear market or do we just kind of have to wait for more data uh, to come out to see which direction the market wants to go? Uh, if it doesn't hit it, you yeah. mean? Is that what you're saying? That's correct. Yep. Uh, well, it's, 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 it doesn't have to hit it. It's just if it does hit it, then that adds... Um, confirmation. Cre- confirmation, yeah. I guess. You get MRC. There'll be other indicators I have, but I kind of watch this one. This one seems to work really well. And if you get it, you don't really want to doubt it because it doesn't really give, it doesn't give failing signals. So That's will it do it or not? I'm not sure. But if it does do it, that would add credit to that. Yeah, we'll probably see new highs. I do think we're going to hit new highs. That RSI thing I showed on the chart today, hitting above 80, has a really good track record. Uh, so this would be adding to that track record. So, uh, But I think between now and probably October, we're, we're just in a trading range, you know, testing the previous highs, and there's a chance we could test the August 5th low. That's a huge trading range. But it's yeah. also an opportunity to make a lot of money. Totally. Because these, these, these rallies up are really fast, and these declines are really fast down. So I'm thinking we're just going to get whipped around in the market. Uh, or I'm not going to get whipped around because I know what to look for. But if you got to watch, because uh, I'm thinking this market's going to whip up really quick and, and possibly come right back down again. Okay, and, and you more or less a side, sideways trading range. No, totally. And, and you're seeing, we have some people asking about the GDX. I know we don't have any charts today, but you're seeing kind of similar uh, movements with the GDX as with the SPX, the general market? Yeah, I, I think, and this is, both markets kind of just, they're declining and rallying together. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm thinking there's, there's no whole, I thought they might separate on this decline. They really yes. didn't. They kind of kept step in step. Uh, internals look fine. The buy signals I got on the weekly and monthly charts, usually, you know, you have consolidations that usually, uh, you know, um, they're not like going to break new lows. The bottom is in for GDX. You're not going to see, uh, that low again, uh, looks like about 20, 26 area, 25 area. You're not going to see that low uh, again for a number of years. Uh, so. Mm-hmm. This market in general is still going to make higher highs and higher lows as it goes over the next uh, year and a half because the monthly charts give a bicycle on May 31st. That predicts a year and a half rally from that point. That's like November 2025. The weekly charts give a bicycle on March 18th of this year. That predicts at a minimum of a year and a half rally. So that'd be 19 or 2025 of September. So I don't know how high it is, but, uh, you won't see lower highs. You'll, you'll see just basically higher highs, higher lows. So it's kind of like, and also the bullish percent index for the gold miners index hanging around 75%. Now, there's 75% of the gold stocks are on buy signals. And yeah. uh, so that's, that's, and a lot of these stocks, especially gold stocks, that have been kind of dormant for, over the last several years, are probably going to come back to life. That's what kind of a rally that this should be expected. So there'll be a lot of these. I guess penny stocks are, are going to change into five, ten dollar stocks at some point, probably in the next, you know, year and a half, two years, or whatever. How long it's a rally lasts. So, uh, but the gold market is probably in step at least so far this year with the equity market. So one goes up, the other will go up with it.
Absolutely. Yeah, and Tim, if people want to get more of you here, you can go to the OrdOracle.com. That is Ord-Oracle. Again, I want to say as well, uh, you know, Tim, we clip these interviews and we put them on our YouTube channel afterwards. These are fantastic if you guys kind of want to go back through it and kind of really get to what Tim is saying. Uh, also, Tim, you know, you have two uh, webinars that we have up on TFNN.com. That is under the Services tab on TFNN. Scroll right up here, click it. With the secret signs of market tops and then six secret ratios every trader should know with Tim Ord. Uh, Tim, it's always fantastic to have you on. It's good to talk to you again. All right. Well, thank you. We'll, we'll talk to you guys next Tuesday. Sounds good, Tim. We'll so. see you then.